Right, it's Sheila. It's the um, 13th of December 2019. The Tories have just won the general election with a big majority. Just thought I'd announce that. Now going back to 1976, when I was a student teacher in Reading, we had to do lots of projects, lots of work. I was studying sciences, sociology, psychology, intellectual development, also doing jazz, evolution and essence. And one of my projects was to look at education in prison. And this is the original folder with my maiden name there. The original folder I kept this information in. Um, I've got a tape recording which I'm going to try and do in a minute. It's an old cassette recording and I haven't actually got a cassette recorder. It says Elvis on the back of this tape. So it just showed that how I just used it for all sorts of things. But on here we've got um, Visit to Reading Jail, two interviews. One with Reading Education Officer and one with the Broadmoor Education Officer. I happen to be there as well. So this tape... I've had f since 1976, 43 years old this tape is, and it's got Elvis on the other side. Now I've got a feeling I have copied it before, but I can't find it anywhere. Now the only cassette player I've got at the moment is in my camper van. So I'm sat in my camper van on a very windy day, and I'm going to try and... Um, pick up the sound off my cassette player in the van until I can actually purchase a, a cassette player again and do it that way. Um, I'm also going to be looking at the various documentation that I used. I mean here for example is a home office letter Dated the 30th of March 1976, sorry, to me. And um, it says, thank you for your letter of the 17th of March, addressed to the Home Secretary. As you know, prisons in England and Wales are currently experiencing an acute degree of overcrowding. That and the general need for financial stringency has meant that we have to avoid placing any sort of additional burden on hard-pressed staff. Facilities cannot normally be provided for small-scale research projects of the sort which you propose. I realise that this will be a disappointment to you, but I'm afraid that this is an area in which you have very little scope for flexibility. That was from a tea sergeant. Now, for some reason I might have, might have written back, but on the 14th of May 1976, which is a couple of months later... Dear Miss Wood, in reply to your letter of the 12th of May, which has been passed to me for attention, I should be pleased if you could visit the prison on Tuesday evening, 25th of May, at 5.30pm, at which time there is every likelihood that assistance can be given to you relevant to your educational project. Please confirm your intention of attending as stated above. Now this was from the Home Office... HMS Prison, Formbury Road, Reading. Okay, now the other letter was straight from the Home Office of 89 Eccleston Square, London. So I'd get, I did get permission. I did go through the proper channels. They must have thought about it a bit more. Now, long time since this project, and much later in life, I started studying my family tree. And I found out that the governor of Reading Jail, mentioned by Oscar Wilde, was actually a relative of mine. He was an Isaacson. I've got all the details which I will be adding to this video when I get home and I go on to the Family Tree database. Um, he was actually the governor of Reading Jail, mentioned by Oscar Wilde, and there in charge while Oscar Wilde was imprisoned was one of my relatives. He'd been in the army, he was high up in the army, and then when he left the army, he took up several governor jobs in prisons. And he is mentioned in the Ballad of Reading Jail. 
Um, once again, I will also pick that out where he specifically, and here's a, here's a leaflet that Reading Gel gave to me, by the way. They actually gave me this copy. January, February 1976, The Ballad of Reading Gel. They'd only just produced this. So I was lucky that I went in May and I was able to get this copy. Um, and it was a little booklet that they did for the staff and the, the um, prisoners. Um, all sorts of things. Uh, we're, we're done. Well, well. Um, which I will go into in more detail on another video um, and this will all be scanned as well and added to this little um, update I'm doing um, to enable us to get a big big picture of, of what it was and I've actually got the Reading of Ballad the Ballad of Reading Gel printed out somewhere else as well where it mentions the governor um, I don't, it, it doesn't mention it in here. This isn't actually written in here. Um, but I've actually got a copy of the Ballad of Reading Jail somewhere. While I was there as well, um, I was given various little booklets. The Home Office Prison Department, 1973. This is called Vocational Training for People in Custody. Policy Statement 6. By the way, my tutors were very impressed with this project and they used it as a teaching aid to, to, for future students. Um, so that this once again will be scanned and added to this update that I'm doing. So that's in one leaflet. And then we've got policy statement five, education establishments for women and girls. Because I also studied, I also looked at Holloway and education for women as well, particularly. I used the Reading University Library quite a lot to dig up a lot of information, and it's all recorded in my little study. But this was um, printed off in HMS Prison Reading. Um, I got shown around thoroughly the prison, pretty thoroughly, um, by the governor. The chief education officer, I should say, showed me around um, what facilities they had. You know, it was it's a big old prison. It was, you know, quite um, secure as well because of the type of prisoners that they held there. Um, so that was very, very good that I was shown around. I wasn't able to meet any prison prisoners. You have to have even more permission to be able to do that. So I wasn't able to do that, but I did glean a lot of information from the Chief Education Officer of Reading Jail and the Chief Education Officer of Broadmoor Prison. And they are both on my tapes. Um, in here we've got the Bournemouthshire College of Higher Education School of Education Studies, Reading. Um, and... This is all rather crude how I'm doing this at the moment. I'm sat in my van doing it. Um, it goes on about submission of coursework and all that sort of thing. All the best in the exams. Now, in those days, computers weren't really in as such. Not really. Not widespread. Not the, even in. We didn't even know what a mouse was then. We had to do it handwritten. I mean, you could if you had a typewriter print. And later on in my academic career, I would. I've got. My, I've still got my original typewriter. But for, this was just a, a project I did uh, as a second year student doing a B.Ed. And it's Education in Prisons, an educational inquiry into the growth of educational facilities for prisoners. I've got introduction, an outline of the aims of the project, its purpose and areas examined. The Total Institution looks at Goffman's theory of total institution and how education can be of value to the inmates. I look at the growth of education in prisons in the 18th century, 1930s, 1959, 1963, and education in the new Holloway. A visit to Redden Prison, the interview schedule, analysis of questions, background of the prison, Redding Prison Today. Also, present trends and government policy on education in prisons.
summary and conclusions, bibliography, and then this will all be scanned. Here is my written up document, my introduction, the purpose of the project, the basically its attempts to trace the growth of education in prison, um, the dilemmas facing prisoners, a look at the total institution by E. Goff in his book Asylums, looking at establishments like prisons and hospitals, I use that as well, um, the growth of education, the prison is both an institution of social control and a symbol of illegitimate coercion on the part of the state. That was written by T. Morris. I've got all the references I used. And then I looked at different reports um, published by the M HMSO um, about prisons and, and convicts in prisons. Expenditure on prisons I looked at briefly. Um, communication in prisons. Um, and all, on all that sort of thing. This will all be scanned and... Um, I've got a book of references at the back, summary and conclusions. And here's what it says here. This is from The Observer in 1965, What Prisons Taught Me by I. Horobin. Prisons don't deter, they don't reform, they don't even punish in any sensible way. Provided you are dirty enough, lazy enough, selfish enough and cunning enough, you can slope through any ordinary sentence without more than a minimum torment. Now that's what that was just one. Obviously, that is quite a good thing to look at in detail uh, and analyse. That was back in 1965. It would be very interesting, and I expect lots of other people have done studies at the Education Service in Prisons since 1965, since my little project. Um, so. I'm going to try now and tape, record this tape, and um, we'll see how we go from there. But I will be scanning all this documentation. I will be adding it to the update, and it's going to be kept for posterity. So I'm just turning off for a minute while I get the tape recorder ready.